you can ride in the back. You better not mean in the fucking trunk. You Ooh, bacon. Greetings, Tasty Morsels. This is Verse BLT here, and I'm about to watch episode 7 of Sandman, The Doll's House. I don't remember a whole lot of, of what happened in this part of the uh, comics. I remember sort of sort of broad strokes of, of what happened in this one. I remember this particular arc being uh, kind of trippy. <laughs> But I know that it ties back into what we saw with the uh, sleeping sickness that uh, started spreading after Dream was uh, imprisoned by uh, by Roderick Bur uh, Burgess. And um, yeah, even looking at the synopsis here, yeah, it's definitely about that. Because uh, I see Rose Walker is in the synopsis. As Rose Walker goes in search of family. And uh, oh... And we're getting to this part, too. Uh, admirers of the Corinthians' work scheme to get his attention. Oh, crap. Is this the hotel? <laughs> you guys may, have rem may remember that when we got to uh, the diner episode 24-7, I mentioned that I remembered something really messed up happening at a hotel as well. I think that might be what that part's about. But anyway, <laughs> I'm greatly enjoying this adaptation so much. Last episode especially was a highlight for me. They've all been great, but like... You know, those of you who've, who've been following me for a while and, and you know, even the ones who are new who just started following me with Sandman know Death of the Endless is my undisputed Bay of Bays. She's the greatest female comic book character in the universe as far as I'm concerned. I, like, totally love her and, like, you know, uh, so just seeing her show up and... The actress whose name I can't remember, I think it's something French though, like something Baptiste or something like that. She just did such a fantastic job uh, embodying the character. I felt all of the sort of like <laughs> matronly, maternal kind of like love and compassion and just joy of life and everything just radiating from the character is sort of like ancient sad but still optimistic in a weird sort of way kind of personality vibe she gives off i don't know she just she nailed it uh, it's just everything about the way she approached the role just completely embodied the character um you know like i won't pretend that i don't care at all about uh swapping uh, ethnicities and things like that with a character um, I don't lose my shit over it like a lot of people do but you know I do sometimes wonder about certain decisions things like that but I said to myself you know I may have this idea in my head like this visual in my head of what death looks like because of the comics but that doesn't mean that she has to look like that so you know with with characters Usually their ethnicity is not a crucial part of who they are. Um, it, but, you know, obviously it depends on the story. But especially in a situation where we're talking about, you know, these eldritch entities that transcend time, space, and even other deities. They are whatever the person interacting with them brings to the table. You know what I mean? So what mattered most was her personality. And like I said, she absolutely nailed it. So I was 100% happy. The only things that, that I would have loved to have seen that were missing from the episode were her umbrella, which I don't even think she had, was carrying around with her in that part of the books anyway, so it's okay. But it's just, I'd love to see her with her umbrella because it's just, I don't know, it's such an iconic image. Uh, and the fact that she didn't hit Dream over the head with the baguette. <laughs> but other than that, everything else was 100% like just spot on. And those things are so minor. I only mentioned them just because, you know, it just would have been a little bit of extra icing on the cake uh, to have seen those things. But anyway, pivoting away. At the end of the episode, we got to see that Desire is uh, pursuing their agenda. Still don't know exactly what that agenda is. And I can't really remember. It. I know Desire had an agenda, but I can't quite remember what the plan was so so i'm kind of in the dark on that one too because my memory is just faulty i guess uh but 
uh, it involves despair, which makes sense uh, if you guys know anything about the comics. You know, so you have the Endless, obviously. They're not true siblings the way, you know, he, we are. We get these siblings with another human being. Obviously, they're not living beings, so they don't have genetics and things like that. So they don't have brothers and sisters and parents and all that stuff. But they're linked to each other so closely that they're essentially siblings. And of all of them, the two closest would definitely be Desire and Despair. They are, they are twins. Uh, they came into an existence at the exact same time as one another. And um, it's their dynamic was very interesting in the comics. I have, unfortunately, I've managed to kind of like steer clear of a lot of uh, spoilers for the show. And I put that in quotes because, like I said, I have read the comics. So spoilers kind of take on a weird <laughs> dimension for me. Um, because I technically know, at least in broad strokes, where the story is going anyway. But I've tried to steer clear of a lot of visuals um, for, for things that haven't just been put out in posters or whatever, and I hadn't seen anything about how they were going to approach um, Desire or Despair. So when I saw Desire's uh, actor on screen for the first time, that was the first time I had ever seen them. And when I saw, even though I had heard all before, all before seeing the show that they had chosen a, um, a non-binary actor, I believe. Um, I, I was going to say trans actor, but I don't think that's true. I think I think they're just non-binary. Um, but I knew, you know, that the person was in the, you know, the LGBTQIA uh, plus community beforehand. But I didn't know anything about Spare. And unfortunately, literally like yesterday, I think, no, two days ago, after all of that, <laughs> as late as I have too, especially I still hadn't seen anything, I suddenly saw a picture of the Spare for some article someone wrote where they said that, um, Neil Gaiman was having regrets about the way the show portrayed uh, Despair. And I, I think I can see already like what his regrets were, because I noticed um, the portrayal was noticeably toned down, at least from the image I saw. And I'm curious to see how that will play in the show, because, you know, part of a very essential part of the character in the comic was just how almost brutal um, her portrayal was, you know, just like how outwardly pathetic she was. There, are, of course, are different ways to convey that, but like, I think to get to a level of abject patheticness, you know, like a level of pathetic below which you cannot go, there are other things you need to show because patheticness isn't just like, oh, feeling bad for yourself about a few things. It's, it's, sort of representing the idea of that everything is as bad for you as it possibly can be. And I think the comic got pretty close to sort of visually depicting that because it's not just about, oh, the character is overweight or, you know, slovenly or whatever. No, I mean, despair in the comics was like suffering incarnate. You know what I mean? Like you look at her and go, oh my God, this poor thing. Um, and, and, and it seems like they toned down everything and just sort of made her just kind of like overweight and frumpy and that's not despair that may make you feel a little blah may make you feel like you know uh, nobody likes me or whatever but that's <laughs> that's just like run-of-the-mill kind of sadness that's not despair despair is far deeper than that but anyway we get off of that uh i am curious to see what happens in the doll's house that I can't remember, which is probably a lot, and how these other things are going to go down, and to see stuff about the plot. All these good things. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and get right into it before I start rambling again, because you guys know how I can get. <laughs> Rose Walker. All his library is starting to reform, I think. So these are the books of people's dreams. How far is New Jersey from Florida? About two days in the car, but... Mm. He doesn't want us to go. I knew that experience growing up, listening to people yelling and screaming all the time. I'm not going with you. Not this trip, sweetie. Dad promised. He 
changed his mind. He said he missed you too much. That's a classic controlling narcissist move right there. Say goodbye to your brother. And wait for me in the car, okay? And people use children as freaking bargaining chips. Or to suddenly renege on agreements you, that they made uh -huh. and things like that just to, just to control you. I'm just going to say this right now, honestly. Oh, if you... If you have too much ego, just don't fucking have children. All right? Just don't. Find some other way of getting attention and control and feeling control. But don't bring kids into the world just so that you can fucking use them as uh, pawns. I hate people who do shit like that. Will you talk to me, Queen of Despair? I don't know who this actor is, but my goodness, they are desire. <laughs> it's just such a vamp. I have news. Prodigal has returned. What? <laughs> oh. I love how they keep see, they keep uh, no, no, sprinkling the prodigal through here. I speak of dream. Dream still behaves as if his realm is superior to ours. It's time that he learned that dreams are merely echoes of desire and despair. You guys are a continuum, basically. It won't work. Nada was a mistake. Roderick Burgess was a diversion. Interesting. These are expansions, definitely. I don't think the comics made them responsible for all of those things. But I could be misremembered. Okay, well we're still we're still keeping the the cutting herself with her hooks. But she is the only vortexes do if people are paying you to be somewhere that is a job and this foundation is paying you to fly to london and they're not paying me your per diem is 250 pounds a day in cash that's definitely being paid it does get easier right you don't still think about hector every second of every day do you i don't know if i would say it, it gets easier in a lot of the ways people probably think but like you do get to a point where you can go longer without thinking about it but every time you do think about it it still hurts now i'll need a complete list of all entities residing here okay let me have a think um <laughs> there's me the house of secrets itself obviously the bottling and um Something unspeakably nasty in the basement. Something nasty in the basement? <laughs> try not to go down there. I'm trying to remember if they ever say what it is. When you lose your parents, you suddenly realize it wasn't gravity keeping you on the ground all this time. Is this a British actress doing an American accent? Some, something sounds slightly off. How are you? Are you okay? Probably not. No. Why do you say that? Because instead of being back at work, I'm on a plane to London, talking to my dead husband. Ah. Sorry to wake you, but would you mind fastening your seatbelt? Thank you. I liked how they did that scene. I have accounted for 11,062 of them. Wow. Someone's been busy. Lucien is efficient. Three of the major arcana are gone. The first is Galt. A nightmare who, I must say, I never trusted. She is a shape changer. It is not in her nature to be trustworthy. <laughs> Wake up. We're here. I just had the weirdest dream. And they're even filming the scenes with Rose as if uh, using a little bit of dream logic, you know, where we're just hopping around. Is this the Foundation headquarters? This is a private care home for the elderly. My client is a resident. Shall we go in? Yeah, I mean, this is... Burgess's old house, isn't it? I mean, to be perfectly honest, these old manors and everything, they, they do kind of all look alike. <laughs> do you know what an annulet is? A 
It's a kind of ring, I believe. Old word. Where did such a young girl run across such an old word? Not that young. I'm actually 21. No one ever believes me. <laughs> and they always ask to see my ID. It's annoying. I believe you. What's annoying is when they stop asking. Trust me. I remember when that finally stopped happening for me. Come in, please. Honestly, I don't think anybody ever could tell my age until I started to put on weight, interestingly enough. Oh, are you, uh... You must be Rose. I am. Her grandmother. My name is Unity, Unity Kincaid. Please. Uh, I'm sorry if, uh, if I remember correctly, that might have been a spoiler, Ooh. depending on... But you guys should have watched the episode oh, already. mine when I was a girl. <laughs> what are you watching a reaction for if you haven't watched the episode? I had the most glorious life. I took over my father's business, and I met a man with golden eyes, and we had a baby. Mm. But it wasn't until I woke up that I found out that none of it was real. Maybe it was, just in a different Except way. the baby. They hushed it up at the time, but Mr. Holdoy yeah. found out that she was adopted by a fine family, and that she grew up to have a daughter of her own, called Miranda. Okay, great grandmother. And I I'm sorry to have brought you here under false pretenses, but I thought that if it were explained to you first, you might not have, you might not have come. No. <gasps> I mean, I'll let you catch up. Honestly, it no, means no, a lot no, to her. She okay. just found oh out God. she actually has some we family. Talk. We need a marquee player. People have already bought tickets. Not as many people as last year. All the more reason to go big. Yep, yep, the hotel thing I was thinking of. The, the Corinthian. Corinthian. <laughs> yeah. I reach out every year. No response. How old do you think he is? The Corinthian. Oh, he's been around for forever. No. The waiter. 16, 17. Too old for you. He looks younger. Really? Looks older to me. <laughs> what do you think he does with the eyes? He's a collector. Same as us. I, I can invite him again through the usual channel. No, if we want to get his attention, we have to think like him. Act like him. May I help you? Mm. Well, you're not Rose Walker. <laughs> and you are? I guess you could say I'm kind of a headhunter. A lot of shows have uh, really good light motifs going for certain characters lately. Corinthian's theme is very good. Yeah, how long do you think she'll be away? A week. But you're welcome to wait. I mean, I get it. He's a good looking man, but geez, dude. I don't think I've ever been that level of horned up. If someone was out there taking credit for my work, I'd find them, and I'd make sure they never did it again. That's another good reason not to do it. That settles it. Uh, we've decided. We need to go. She just, uh, she just did it, dude. I want dessert. Where's the waiter? We are sending a message to the Corinthian. And the waiter isn't coming back. And I can't remember whether this happened in the comics either. I, I, I kind of remember them just going straight to the hotel and starting there. But again, I could be wrong. Hello, Rosie. Come in, my butterfly. You are at a crossroads. Oh, hello. Each name is but a single aspect of the whole. Be satisfied with the trinity you have, love. You wouldn't want to meet us as the kindly ones. Nope. Beware dreams and houses. What do you mean? <sighs> you have asked the wrong question. Had you asked the right one, we could have warned you. Against the Corinthian, told you about Jed and about Morpheus. One minor nitpick the, the mythology nerd in me must make. Maiden should be younger, crone should be older. Lida and her husband basically adopted me. <laughs> we felt like Rose adopted us. Which makes you and your husband my family too. Should I send him a plane ticket so he can join us? That's very sweet of you, but Hector passed away about a year ago. I'm so sorry. Don't be. We had years together. But it's never enough years though, is it? Never is. Seems we've all had our lives terribly interrupted, haven't we? 
Her necklace also Maybe seems that's like a life is, something from mythology. And eruptions and reconnections. <laughs> a new connection. My parents gave me this a long time ago. It's yours now. Thank you. <laughs> it's a gold annulet. What? What's wrong? I, I had a dream in the car um, on the way here about an amulet. Did you? Well then, may all our dreams come true. Well, only the good ones, hopefully. <laughs> Rose certainly left you plenty to read. You a big reader? He is, in a manner of speaking. I prefer people. Hmm. It's good news for people. Something wrong? Yeah, I gotta get to work. More headhunting? Well, it looks like it. <laughs> Are you sure you don't have time for just one more round? Should ask Rose to call me. Don't know how lucky you are right now, my friend. You got your rocks off and you got to keep your life. Is it true? Hey, what's up there, buddy? Yes. The plans for the new Celestarium have been approved. Was it Marvin, right? Close enough. I'm here to talk about the Vortex. I know this voice. Who's Matthew? Merv. It's Merv. Me. Stop. He's sending the new kid? Wait a minute, is that freaking... Is that Bradley Cooper? No. Tell me what to watch for. Any unusual behavior. I'm gonna have to look that up Set later. The pumpkin to the talking bird. Can you be a little more specific? Sounds a little bit like his Rocket the Raccoon voice. Look for any signs of shock or trauma. Anything that could trigger her into killing us all. So basically anything. <laughs> basically, yes. You see anything, you tell Lucy it before you tell the boss. Marvin. Stop. Everyone knows you secretly run this place. A good major domo always takes care of things before they get to the level of the king. Oh, that's awesome. People who worked on this show must have had such a good time, man. Just flexing all that creativity. Cape Kennedy is exactly how I remember it. Yeah, change is not something that happens in Florida. <laughs> you speak light up. Facts. I may have told Rose my life story. I definitely told her mine. <laughs> hey, are you Rose and Lida? Hi. Hi, I'm Ken. I'm Barbie. <laughs> it's terrible. We know. <laughs> Their introduction was the point in which I started getting really confused in the, reading the comics. So I was like, wait a minute. What the hell is happening here? I may have told them your life story as well, but it's just to spread the word about your brother. It's not because we were gossiping. Uh, extroverts. We were sorry to hear about your mother's death. Oh, and your husband's. Chantal and Zelda live upstairs across the hall from you. See, I would be very intrigued by them because I am a fan of weirdos. <laughs> Being a weirdo myself, of course. Rose, if I tell you where your brother is, then what? What do you do when he says, I don't want to live with these people. I want to live with you. Are you prepared to raise a 12-year-old boy by yourself at your age? Do you have a job? Health care? It's a sad reality, but it is reality. Jets Fosters were friends of your dad's. They were? They took Jet in, applied to be his Fosters, and now they're getting 800 a month, so Jet's doing just fine. And I hope so. I had a dream, a dream about you, baby. It's gonna come true, baby. You noticing how everything's like focusing on her? Like everything? Kind of reminds me a little bit of Coraline. Probably not a quinky dink since it's also Neil Gaiman. Turn it up, light the lights. You got nothing to hit but the heights. It's a shame I'm gonna have to edit the heck out of this. I know I'm gonna have to cut this pretty much this entire musical number. Damn, you got some pipes. Everything's coming up roses for me and for you. Yeah. 
Is your friend not there? I'll be your friend. And a girl like you shouldn't be alone. Fellas, stop being assholes. Gentlemen, seems to me that this young lady is desirous of retaining her jewelry and her honor. Nice. <laughs> It's a good skill in life to be able to spot a sword cane. I once freaked a guy out at a bank because I recognized right. he had one. <laughs> this is Gilbert, right? Thank you. We are help. <laughs> you didn't need my help. You were doing quite well on your own. <laughs> what's this? Um... Shall we call the police? Oh, man, what's his I name? I think I just need to get home. Fry. Something Fry, right? Uh, the name's Gilbert, by the way. Are you the Gilbert who lives in Hell's Attic? The very same. You aren't by any chance the new downstairs front lodger. The very thing. <laughs> Delighted. I would, I would kind of be like another Gilbert in the house, mostly keeping to myself, but every now and then coming down to involve myself in the shenanigans. I figured if one copycat crime doesn't get the Corinthians' attention, two will. Um, <clears throat> make that. Three. Though I consider mine to be more of an homage. You both said this was a terrible idea. <laughs> in the absence of a better one. This is a really bad idea to be doing this in a, in a restaurant, guys. We hoped that since you are the current Corinthian, <laughs> you might deliver the keynote speech. The current Corinthian. <laughs> well, you don't look 130 years old to me. Thank you. Well, that's quite an honor. A gathering of like-minded souls, all uh, sharing the same dream. Wonder if I might bring a guest. A fellow collector? Oh, somebody who can take our shared dreams to a whole new level. Oh, man. We are not prepared for that hotel, guys. <laughs> that's another one where I can't remember specifics. I just remember the feeling I had reading it, which is just what of utter shock and awe <laughs> like what on earth is happening right now the last nightmare jed walker had before he disappeared was of gold you think she severed him from the dream i do why because he's not just any child is he excuse me i am rose walker you, this should not be possible for you what do you know about my brother jed Dream, you might want to start taking this vortex seriously. I ran away. What? Why? What happened? Uncle Barnaby said he's gonna lock me in the cellar. Why? What did you do? Nothing. I swear. What did you do? That's not a question you ask when some, when a kid tells you I'm gonna be locked in the cellar. You have to go now. Okay. <laughs> if a kid tells you someone's about gonna said they're gonna lock me in the cellar, your question shouldn't be what did you do. Your question should be how can I help. Let, let's get you out of here. The hell is going on out here? Nothing, Barney. Just... I found Jed. I was just going to bring him home. Jed's coming home with me. Are you, Jed? Yes, sir. I swear, if, if there is some sort of hell, people who abuse children have a very special place there. No, you don't get to ride up front. You can ride in the back. You better not mean in the fucking trunk. You... Barnaby, no! You want to get in there with him? Then don't tell me no. Fucking piece of shit. I have a particular traumatic memory related to to that. So I'm sorry, guys. I'm gonna. I'm gonna need a minute. Um, okay. 
Okay. Um, I thought I was going to have to stop recording, honestly, but. When I was a kid, honestly, only a little bit older than this kid, because they said he was 10, right? So I think I was about 11. But um, I had a, um, my mom was married to a man, my bro my little brother's father. And he, he, he did something similar. Let's just leave it at that, you know, not because. You know, I think it's too private to share, but it's just, there's a lot of um, PTSD related to that particular event. Because it, um, it lasted an entire day. So it's just hard for me to, to really go there, you know? Um, Anyway, interesting episode. Um, I liked how they wove together the setup for what's going on with the Corinthian and and the um, the convention <laughs> that's coming up. Um, wow, yeah, I'm I'm actually starting to see panels again from that. That that was that that's going to be something. I don't know if they're going to do that for next episode. Because, um, let's see what. It's episode 8. I think there were 9 episodes in the main run. And then they did the bonus episode. So, my guess is the hotel, the, the convention, is going to happen in episode 9. Because that's definitely something to cap off the season with. Um, but it was really interesting watching, uh those three I, I cannot for the life of me remember whether or not their little plan to get him in in uh to notice them was included in a graphic novel or if it was just something that was talked about at the convention when they were talking about oh the guest of honor and, and that they had done some stuff to get his attention i can't remember specifically what that was in it but still loved it, it was, that was very fascinating um even though <laughs> i'm always kind of weirded out by when shows do scenes of people discussing incredibly sensitive secret things in a space where they're surrounded by ears <laughs> and even having them go back to the um you know to have to continue having their meeting where they're all walking around carrying well the other two are walking around now carrying eyes of their own <laughs> that they've taken from people they go back to the same exact place where one of them a few days ago had killed someone else in the bathroom and left them without their eyes. It's just, I'm like, how did these guys not get caught yet? They're very reckless, you know? And then, you know, getting the stuff with uh, Unity's story. Um, I, I, I feel like they handled it pretty well with what happened to her. Though I think that I, I would have preferred us to have a little bit more of a moment to really reflect on what was done to her while she was unconscious in the hospital. You know, obviously, I mean, we all connect the dots, obviously. We don't need them to necessarily show it at some point in the series or anything like that. But I just felt like we kind of went past it a little quickly, like a little, almost like we yada yada it. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't know, I just felt like that the injustice of what was done to her needed a little more room to breathe um, for its impact to sink in a little more. You know, I think they did a great job of kind of building up the concept of a vortex. You can see how, like, you know, there's, there's trepidation uh, amongst uh, the residents of the Dreaming concerning the vortex. Um, and <laughs> I think it's also kind of interesting how Morpheus... Uh, maybe is a little overconfident right now because he's feeling so powerful and uh now that he's reclaimed power that used to be in his uh ruby and uh also has found a new sense of purpose um he's just sort of riding high right now and he's i think he's being a little just a tad bit reckless matthew continues to be great 
I have to look up the voice actor for Merv because it did sound like Bradley Cooper's rendition of, uh, you know, his voice that he does for Rocket in, um, in Guardians and the other MCU stuff. So I'm thinking... <gasps> I promise one day the sleeper will awaken. I'm thinking that it was him, um, but I have to look that up to find out. But anyway, yeah, so uh, the next episode is called Playing House. I see that up on the screen right now. So I'm guessing we're probably going to just basically close out um, the story that's happening here with Rose and, um, and, you know, what's going on at that peculiar house that she's staying at. And um, what's going on with her brother and whether or not she can rescue him. I really, it's funny, I, I honestly don't think I remember that at all. And considering my own trauma, it might have been a bit of the story that I may have, um, may have blocked out. You know, it's, yeah. okay, here we go again. Um, I am obviously those of you who've been with me for a while, you know, I, I am all about feeling your feels and everything. And um, as a result of that, you know, I think I often don't really think of myself as someone who would block out a memory because of the trauma associated with it. But the mind isn't just, you know, what we do consciously or what we think consciously. There's a lot going on sort of under the hood, so to speak. And certain things happen um, on a level we're unaware of. And sometimes the brain just goes, you know, that particular thing, let's just snip that out. Though, if you're going to do that, brain, <laughs> like, why not snip out the actual event that caused the trauma? Because I would, I would definitely be okay with not remembering that anymore. <laughs> Rather than snipping out things that remind you of the trauma. <laughs> uh... I tell you, squishy lump of uh, salty fat controls everything. Anyway, guys, let me know what you thought of the episode. Um, and uh, if you are doing the thing where you're watching the episode and then watching the reaction, like if you, because obviously I am quite behind. So if you're somehow, you know, not caught up with, you know, like if you haven't watched episode eight yet, or whatever, um, let me know what your speculation is about all the stuff we saw today and where you think this is going, you know, like, what do you think is going on with the people in, in the house? Uh, and to be honest, I can join you a little bit on this, because like I said, I have an imperfect memory, uh, missing a lot of detail uh, from the book, so I don't remember exactly what's going on with the house, but I, I do feel a vague sense of um, unreality here. And, uh, like I said, I basically have apparently blocked out completely all the stuff going on with her brother. Um, which makes me extra scared because if I blocked it out, that would seem, that would kind of suggest that the ending of that is not a happy one. But I'm hoping that I'm just reading too much into my own Swiss cheese going on up there. Um, and, uh, but let me know what you guys think is going to happen with that. Um, what you think the fates were trying to warn Rose about. Um, especially regarding, you know, like the wording they used. And uh, <laughs> what do you think is uh, going to happen at the convention with the Corinthian and uh, all of this uh, serial killer fan club, guys? Anyway, guys, thanks so much for uh, watching this reaction with me, for joining me on this journey. Uh, thanks for, you know, thanks for just generally being a good community of people who are supportive of males feeling their feelings and showing their emotions and not being a bunch of like you know hater tie assholes about it is that slang for something you guys are great i love you guys and uh as always do your best to stay safe and be well i'll see you for the next one sweet dreams hey can't believe it took me all the way to like episode seven like to to have like a really good we'll close out <laughs> anyway guys sweet dreams bye bye right in the back i go down <laughs>